G'day everyone and welcome to another review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2021 release from Ixon Model Railways of the Victorian Railways J-Class steam locomotive in HO scale. Now this one is slightly different than the one that you would get from factory as the one from factory is DC only and is DCC ready. However, the one that I've got here is DCC and sound fitted. So something a bit different. So in this video, we'll take a look at what you get in the box with your J-Class model, a brief history of the prototype. We'll go into the running of the model as well as the sound features that I've had installed and I'll tell you what I think of the overall model at the end. So what do you get in the box? All that's in the box is the J-Class locomotive as the boiler or the locomotive unit and the tender. As well as that, you get this. So this has got a brief history of the locomotive. It's got the maintenance from lubrication, how to disassemble the tender where the 21 pin socket is located. And it's got some information about the pickups as well as a very small exploded diagram about where all the screws and pins are located. Cool. You also get these three little bags. One of them has some window glazing for the cab. So the cab on this locomotive, well, doesn't have windows in it. Well, it's got holes, but if you wanna put glazed windows in it, you can. You get a driver and fireman crew figure, and you get on the coal models, you get the coal shovel, as well as some rotting and things like that for the fireman, which you do have to install. And of course, with the driver and fireman, you do have to paint them yourself, which is, oh, that's something to do. Okay, so as you can see, I have already put my J-Class together. Now it was a little bit fiddly. The tender and the main engine are linked via a set of pins and a socket, as well as a link pin and bar. Link pin and bar, pretty easy. That's quite straightforward. The link, the electronic component uh, connector was a little bit fiddly. It did take a little bit of uh, work to get it in there because I really didn't want to damage anything because there are a lot of fitted parts to this model. But yeah, after just a bit of patience, managed to get it in there and locked it in nice and tight. But it is something that when you do go to do, take your time with it. But once it's on there, for me, I'm the kind of person who will leave it together. I can't see myself um, putting it back, separating it, and then putting it back into this blister packaging and using the factory box. I will probably just use a the, the boxes I use to carry my locomotives in um, for transport when I go from being here to say the club or an exhibition. But that's, that's how you get it together. So now that we've got it all assembled, before we take a look and a listen to this engine running, let's have a quick look, quick overview of the prototype. The 60J class 280 steam locomotives were introduced in 1954 to the Victorian Railways and built at the Vulcan Foundry in Lancashire, England. 30 of these locomotives were built to burn coal, 30 to burn oil. These locomotives saw work all over the Victorian broad gauge network from the mid 50s until the mid 70s hauling trains across the system from mainline passenger trains to freight trains all the way down to mixed trains on seldom used branch lines. J550 holds the distinction of being the very last steam locomotive in normal revenue service on the Victorian railways, finishing up its life as the Bendigo Pilot on the 25th of May 1972. At the time of releasing this video, there is currently only one operational J-Class, J549 at the Victorian Goldfields Railway, with a further three under restoration. J515 and J512 at Seymour Railway Heritage Centre, where J512 is reportedly being converted to standard gauge, which is something that the J-classes were originally intended to be able to do. Their bodies are quite high in comparison to a lot of other Victorian Railways locomotives, and that was the intention to be able to easily gauge convert these locomotives, although none of them ever were. As well as that, J541 is being restored by some members of the Yarra Valley Railway at the Steam Rail Workshops in Newport, and five of the class have been static preserved, with another three in storage. So now that I've got it obviously out on the layout, just quickly, it does look good. 
You can see that it's got some externally fitted parts as well as some molded parts on the boiler. In terms of weight, it feels quite good. The body itself is quite heavy, although the tender is quite light, but I suppose that doesn't matter too much. I do think it is quite convenient that all the wheels have pickups and you can see the pickups if you get right down next to the locomotive. So I guess that's not a drawback so much, but that is something that is visible. But that's just a quick what I've noticed just getting it out of the box. So all of these models do have some similar characteristics with each other. All of them are HO scale and they come with two different tender versions, coal and oil burning. You've got 10 different numbers to pick from plus unnumbered versions. All of them feature cast metal bodies and chassis, a 40 to one gearing ratio, genuine KD couplers, sprung buffers and cab glazing. They have pickups from all driver and tender wheels, scale metal coupling rods, they're designed to operate on 24 inch or 600 millimeter radius curves. They are DCC and sound ready with a 21 pin socket, although the speaker is not included. All of them are in a satin black livery with red lining, and red smoke deflectors. The coal burners are of course supplied with etched fire irons and the total number of production units is limited to 1600 models. So as something I mentioned before, this model is fitted with sound, which is something that is not offered from Ixon as a factory option. Now I got it installed at Trainworld in Melbourne, which is part of a service that they offer. It's been fitted with an ESU decoder as well as a four ohm speaker built by Shannon at Trainworld and has been loaded with DCC Sounds J-Class Steam files. There are 17 sound options on here from everything from a few different whistle options, different uh, drive modes in terms of whether it's under a light load, a drift mode, you've got a bit more in-depth look at what is there, as well as a breakdown of all your different CVs. So that's enough of me talking. Let's have a look and a listen to some running of this J-Class locomotive.
So that's the J class running and a bit of operation on my little layout that I've completed so far. Now there is one thing I can't really test at the moment and that is how well this thing pulls a large load. However, I've had mixed reviews from a lot of people saying it either pulls really, really well or not so great. A few of the people who said it pulls not so great up an incline seem to put it down to there might be a bit of paint still on the wheels, whereas some people say it pulls extremely well. That's something I will, when our club reopens later in the year, hopefully, I'll take this down and I'll put it under a load test and I will add that to, I think, the Model Railway News video. So if you wanna check back with that down the line, I'll tell you exactly what I think on that aspect. But apart from that, everything else seems to be all right. Now, now that you've seen and heard this locomotive, let's look at the price. This locomotive from Ixon or an Ixon retailer will cost you $595 out of the box. Now for a DC ready steam locomotive, ready to run steam locomotive with a nice bit of weight in it, I think that's an extremely good price. The previous J classes that have been released have either been in kit form or a brass, and a brass model will set you back pretty much anywhere between $1,200 and $1,700 respectively. So I reckon that's actually pretty good value. And I think it's a good sign of things to come. I mean, we haven't had, especially for us Victorians, a ready to run steam locomotive for a little while, especially with uh, this kind of detail. Now, the sound aspect to it cost me $250 and that is installed and ready to go. I don't have a programming track or a lock sound programmer or anything like that. So I can't personally download the files, put them in. I don't have the technical know-how and skill to install a decoder in these things. So I think for 250, that's reasonable. Uh, I, I'm absolutely happy to pay that kind of price for that kind of service. So what are my thoughts on this model? Overall, good. It looks good. It weigh, it's, it's got a nice bit of weight to it. And yeah, from just looking at it, it looks fantastic. When you get in really close, there are a few things I can pick out. There are some minor things that I'm not even gonna go into. There are some things just because I don't think they're worth it. The couple of things I can see, and I think that a lot of people will see, pickups just behind the wheels, not the worst thing in the world. You have to be at eye level and nice and close to see those kind of problems. There are some minor paint defects in the paint. Once again, gotta be super close to be able to pick these things up. The red is a little bright. That's nitpicking something that a bit of matte coat, or when you, if you weather it, you wouldn't know. But it does seem just a little too red, not the end of the world. The headlight is really white. I think that's the thing that for me is a real detractor. Well, it's fixable. It's super white. It's, it's quite that, that harsh white. It is dimmable, but it's not changeable in terms of um, color temperature. I feel that it should be like a warm, yeah, it should be like a warm white, like a yellow, as opposed to white. I think for $595 out of the box for a ready to run Victorian Railway steam locomotive, spot on. It's got a nice bit of weight to it. Detail wise from sitting here, that looks great. I love, I, I'm going to love having this in my collection. I think I wish it had come DCC fitted. Like there are some more Victorian Railway steam locomotives that will hopefully actually come out this year with that option. I don't mind paying that little bit more to get something that I want. So I'm happy to pay that little bit extra to get someone else to install it for me, but it would have just been nice to better buy it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there now. It's all here for me anyway. And if you want those kind of options, you can get those options fitted either by yourself or by someone else. There is one other thing, and that is if you have bought a DC version of this, Let's just have a listen to it.
So as you can probably hear, it is a little bit of a noisy runner. Now I put that down to it could just be it needs a bit more lubrication or it's something else. Hopefully it's just lubrication. I don't feel that I should have to lubricate a $600 model, be it steam, be it diesel out of the box, but I realize these things can happen and it does seem to be something that I've noticed on a lot of people's posts on say Facebook that their locomotives are quite loud. Now it doesn't seem to affect the running of the locomotive and I've got the sound turned on. So I guess I'm probably not gonna notice it, but I will down the track. Once I can get this thing back to the club and get it running up a grade and give it a service, maybe that'll change. And that's something I'll touch on or I'll give you an update in say a monthly model railway news video or if I do a follow-up review. Now a little extra, for those of you who want a J class but don't want any of the numbers that are either currently available or potentially sold out and you buy an unnumbered one, the folks over at Broad Gauge Models in Victoria have released J-Class number sets. They'll cost you $6.50 for an unpainted set of four and you can contact them via their Facebook or email. If you want them painted, it'll cost you $16.50, although they have said that it's quite easy to paint and it does come with painting instructions in the pack. So that is something there if you want a custom, I guess custom, um, J-Class model. So. Just a quick recap, is the J-Class worth it at $595? Yes. If you want sound for an extra 250 from the folks down at Train World, is it worth it? Yes. For me, everything I collect from now on will be sound fitted and I am going back through my old locomotives to get them sound fitted as well so everything's up to a standard for myself. Do I wish that it had come with DCC and sound factory fitted? Absolutely. Does it matter? Not really at all. I'm more than happy to support my local hobby shop and in this case it's train world and they're offering that service so if you want it contact train world and they will get back to you and get that sorted out so have you bought one of these j-class locomotives if you have what's your feedback on it what has your experiences been so far feel free to leave it in the comments below as well as that are you buying one let us know about that too let us know your feedback and of course leave me some feedback about this video because that really helps me progress along the channel now, if you really like this video, of course, leave it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, don't forget to subscribe because I'll have more videos coming out of reviews for locomotives, hopefully in the future. So yeah, that's everything. Um, if you do have anything you wanna leave me in the comments below, just drop it down there. So until next time, hooroo. Oh, I'll leave you with some more running shots too.